back. Good to see you again. We continue our exploration of the next space with quite a hybrid personality, I would say. He's both Portuguese and French. He works in the cusp of art and architecture, um, on the cusp of body and space. He has a very personal yet, I would say, artistic approach to human-centric spaces that don't comfort, but instead challenge body and mind. Does this sound intriguing? Please put your hands together for Didier Faustino. Good afternoon. Thank you, Robert, for this introduction. Um, I will make a compliment uh, to this presentation. Uh, artist, architect, I don't know, but probably a coffee machine. Why a coffee machine? Because uh, this interesting element uh, is about an uncertain process, putting together two elements coffee, grains, and water to produce, using this combination, something, I will not say new, something unexpected with the coffee, the drinking coffee. We live in this period of it, uh, let's say, instable, a bit frightened. Here is a quote uh, of the last part of the film uh, Fight Club, when the towers fall down. And the two guys, the same guy with two personality, is looking about the world falling down. We are also looking about this world, and as designers, as producers, as questioners, uh, trying to establish new possibilities. No. I'm looking back, voila. My studio is called Miss Architecture, with a mix between Miss and architecture, something where we qualify uh, a place where unexpected and usually undesirable heaven can appear. We start about uh, 20 years ago now, it's quite a long moment now, about exploring different possibilities, possibilities in architecture, but mostly around the body. The body as the element with the interface, the element who activates space. And one of the notions who interests us is this notion of fragility. Um, just an explanation about the word on the top, who is don't trust A, not anarchists, but architects. The discipline is about convincing, about remodeling, about constructing. I think the discipline of architecture is about more something who is about questioning the world we live, the um, world we act. Um, I feel, we feel, as misfits, and probably most of our projects doesn't fit well as proposals. They fit well or better as questions, as interrogations. The body is the center of our, our work, and we explore always surrounding this situation, what is the body, and how uh, the condition of the body can influx, can... Um, be exploring or be the activator of the space. The body will be the body as our body, physical body, but also social, political, whatever. It's about questioning the future. It's about questioning the possibilities, questioning our own possibility between two statements, between as this um, 
I don't remember the name in, uh, in English, but uh, Marel uh, is used from one way to the other way and try to combine it, these different possibilities in new hypotheses. New hypotheses um, where basically the key point is future, it's not something new, future will be a remake. Everything is there, everything is surrounding us. Just have a look on different statement situation. I will start with an old project. Uh, this project was actually a proposal for Roswell uh, in the US, this small town where the aliens arrived supposedly in the 60s or the 50s. This interrogating uh, place about, uh, let's say, a um, possible or an hypothesis of something different. Who are these people? So the competition was to design an hotel for aliens. And we propose a very simple typology, bringing a very simple element we can be recognized with this piece of puzzle becoming architecture, becoming space, and dividing two situations, B and A, privacy, public space, public and private, individual or collective versus collective. And we propose an adaptive element, a micro architecture from one to multitude, from one to multi-use and multi-adaptation, something who is simple element became from repetition, becoming complex and appropriable, a non-stop uh, rhizomatic architecture, who can be adaptive to the space and at the same time a solution for new systems. These new systems will be systems who can be um, receive flux of people, flux of population. On the case of Roswell and this proposal, the question was not aliens and use and behaviors or people or new humanity coming from other space, but the reality within the border, the reality is next your door. In the case of US, in the case of Roswell, New Mexico, the border, the aliens are the ones who come from the other side. So how to solve the situation, not to recuse it, but to bring knowledge from that and to build a society, a world where we can extend and we can improve the possibilities of the new coming people. About this new coming people, um, it was about uh, now, let's say, around 20 years ago for the Venice Biennale, uh, where we were invited as a young team of architects. And the question uh, the curators of the Biennale of Architecture asked us was, what will be a world with more ethics and maybe a little bit less aesthetics concern? I was really shocked at this time about the not fitting uh, European policy. The policy at this time was to say we need to take care about the future because Europe needs to be closed to the coming new migration and etc. So a lot of countries start to have this discourse. We were at this moment where we need to build something together, but we want to be close. And this situation is now continuing. But at this time, one thing came to us was the death of a young man coming from, I think, Dakar, uh, illegally in a plane. He survived, he was on the road of the plane, and he came to Europe uh, and this situation. He survived and uh, police, I mean government, take him back to his country. And the question was, 
how can we build a new world or a collective or common world if we don't accept the difference and the newest, the new situation? If we don't accept uh, our world need to be regenerated and the exchange is the key point of humanity, the knowledge is the exchange, the future has always been in something who is already here, already as an element who can be built. So what we discover with this situation is this kid, because he did it one time, because the situation was so extreme, he wants to survive, he wants something better, he come back. But this time he died, and we find him on the, when the plane arrived to Europe, uh, frozen body, dead body. And through that, the question was, how can we solve this situation where a very simple fact shows us all the absurdity of our world is? So we propose an unacceptable proposal, was to produce an architecture closest to the body, an architecture with this only the simple aim is to protect fragility, protect the most valuable thing with life. And we propose to build this micro-architecture and to confront companies of airplanes to accept, to provide a service, an impossible service. This project is not a solution, was not a solution. This project was a question. What can I do? What should we do? What should we be concerned about? Fragility, probably, is the point. Humanity, bodies, we are fragile. We all are fragile. So architecture should be considered as an element to provide a kind of security. We propose few years after to think about this notion of skin, of double skin, not about people in transit, but about domestic. This question of domesticity, of individuality, was the center and is still the, the, is still the center of our research, who is what could be the next point to provide dignity. In this situation, project called, the previous project was called Body in Transit. This project is called Home Suit Home. So what can be a home, the minimal, the most important home, the home for our body, our mind, is this double skin, this skin of renew material, reusing elements. We are still thinking about what can we act as architects? One of the questions is, architecture is a way to dominate, is a way to organize, is a way to protect, probably, but is also an instrument of power, an instrument of organization. About that, we believe in one situation, is architecture is a way to domesticate. So why the architecture cannot be the way to reactivate our undomesticated situation, the way to reactivate our animality? That's the big point. Animality is not probably fitting with the idea of collectiveness about society, but it's the point where we can see an element of freedom. Here's this picture I love from Minimum Existence Project by Alfred Hübner in the 20s. is probably the ultimate proposal making the point about what should be the most smallest space to survive as fragile entity. We proposed a few years ago also to explore the question of domestic space and the question of real estate, about what makes the difference 
between elements, built elements, probably more the cost of the land than probably the cost of the construction. So we invert that to this project and we integrate that in this project called one square meter house. A house who just need one square of land and the cost of the house will be the same for everywhere in the world, just depending the cost of the land. In the other hand, this house will be only fitting for one individual person, and the multiplication of this house will be reinforce the need of collective life, the need of exchange. This exchange is the most important to survive. At the same point, the individual system is necessary, but we need to produce also elements to live together, to share space. Here we have the prototype we built in Paris, uh, which is not successful because uh, we could never uh, make it really work because the security um, rules uh, don't allow us to make it open for use. So this is the prototype. Sometimes failure is interesting to create new situation. Here, uh, about collective, we were invited to redesign a very historical place in Paris for two years when the modern of art That will be another exercise, okay. <laughs> uh, the Modern uh, Art Museum closed for renovation and they asked uh, us to rethink the temporary space in the uh, center of Paris. We was this building uh, in the School of Medicine. We was also the birth of French Revolution. And we find a space like that. So the uh, museum asked me, the curators, the director, asked me to think about what should be a temporary space for multi-use exhibition, lectures, and events. What we propose is to not, I think it's Sloterdijk who said, like the contemporary situation is not to build, uh, to make buildings or to build uh, new constructions in the environment, but the inverted situation, to bring a new environment in the existing buildings. In this case, what we propose is to bring fragility inside of this historical building and to use the most, let's say, ambiguous material who is this survival blanket where everybody knows who is the most ambiguous because it's at the same time, actually this product was called the Captain, uh, built by Ron Poulenc company for satellites and for uh, exploring the space. And at the same time, after that, when it became, this material became a popular material and come in the common thing, became the blanket and etc. Element for sport and etc. So this material became the element to build this experience of collective with this instant uh, to be together in a space to share ideas. And we propose to do this double revolution, this um, vortex for this exceptional moment where the people met and exchanged together. A lecture hall, a performance hall, a place to be together. A place to be together starts with a very simple situation with the one-to-one. -one. Most time is the bed, and we design also a bed for two people to try to find some connection. Actually, these pictures should become after the projects now. So, this notion of collective and reverting individual or this kind of moment find uh, a very precious uh, quote by, by Hervé Guibert on this uh, text called Vice. And in Reglement, Hervé Guibert says, the vice should be a service public gratuit. So 
translation is uh, service or something should be gratuit. Sorry, I'm really bad about translating, but I'm sure you understand. And in the middle of this very interesting text, you find something who is very, for me, fundamental, who is what is um, a good action is the action who make us lose time. So losing time is the moment the most luxury today. About losing time, we did this space, we, we was questioning by the client to do the most luxury apartment. It was for Beijing Biennale 10 years ago, uh, where the question was, what will be the next step for housing, the next step for domestic space? What we propose is to divide the space in two situations and to inflate the most infinim, uh, infinitesimal moment with the moment where you get in an apartment, who is the moment where you come from a situation outside to inside, you introduce yourself in the intimacy of the people living there and to inflate this space. So the luxury, we divide the space in two situations, who is the space of use, who is the surrounding space, also using the most common and cognitive elements of furniture, the ones you find in the street everywhere. And we enclose in this surrounded space, a space for nothing. What you have seen is this space for different use, the activities of the housing of the domestic, sleeping, eating, cleaning, etc. And in the central space, what is the usually the thing we never consider in the space, we propose to inflate the losing time as the key point of the house, of the apartment, of the housing moment. And this space became a space for nothing, just a space to lose time properly, the luxury moment of the house, the space to share, to exchange with others. This apartment cost less of the expected uh, cost the client gave us. And of course, was an experience of moment. The behavior we generate in this space was totally unexpected. A lot of things appear and occur in this space. At the end, it was not successful because uh, the promoting company don't want to build these kind of things. And one of the reasons was they interrogate people using the space was it's too freedom, it's too inventive and challenging space. It's only for very rich people who have time to lose to imagine the way of occupy it. So kind of failure, but at the same time kind of success. About uh, success, this project brings us to another project who was a company uh, who asked us to design an hotel in Amazonia. Um, we recuse to do this project because we find absurd the idea of building things in a protected area. Um, and we take this commission, we refuse as a state a step to speculate on what should be buildings tomorrow. And we just designed this kind of strange, we see, interface for the people to discuss together between screens and the kind of facial recognition where the discussion between two people, you see the seats and the screens behind, where discussion on two people became a kind of uh, I don't know the word in English, in Portuguese is comprovative, a kind of proof of the truth, a kind of go and back between two people, like to escape about world of simulac. About world of simulac, the tower is called the broken high rise. It, should be, it could be the only way to design an hotel in Amazonia. Um, a kind of hotel where the failure of himself will be 
the next step. About next step, we are surrounded about a lot of mass media, a lot of things, a lot of interface. This interface provides us many ways to be somebody else. And all our attitudes are controlled now and under, let's say, um, assistance. One of the big assistants today is to meet people. And we are not able anymore to meet people. We need some application like Tinder, like uh, Grinder, like blah, blah, blah. And at the same time, all these elements provide us a very easy way to meet. I don't know if it's easy, but kind of moment where the algorithm and all these elements give us a filter to meet the others. At the same time, I don't know where are the space for that. And we start to think about what should be in the public space the place to meet other people. And we provide this element. Actually, this drawing is a kind of fake drawing by the Voyager one, uh, who was, you know, this capsule will go to the space, uh, exploring the universe with this shape plat plate with what is humanity? A man and a woman. We just alterate some obvious element of this representation of our humanity. And we provide a new project with a proposal for cities to accommodate this new interface, a room to meet other people quickly in the street, somewhere, anywhere, and to do whatever you want. So this room is called Tender Room, a room where domesticity, animality, whatever, proximity, desire, can be recreated. A point of humanity or a point of quietness in this wild world. I will finish my presentation super quickly with Two things I was telling you about event. We still, we are always in this idea of architecture design should be something with giving a new key. And sometimes we need to recuse uh, to be too spectacular. It was a few years ago, uh, a collector, French collector, who owns the famous house of André Bloch, who was the owner and the founder of French magazine Architecture d'Aujourd'hui. He was himself a sculptor, architect, engineer, and he built these follies in this garden. And the owners of the space today asked me to design something, a kind of place near uh, a room within the back of this uh, sculpture uh, to provide a new situation for them, a kind of kiosk to make music and to make some discussions. So we work a lot on that. And at the end, we propose a very, very simple thing, who was a specific stage for event, a wow space built with nothing. The cost was 2,000 euros at the end. The budget at the beginning, uh, when the client comes to us, was 20,000 euros. Uh, and we said, we don't need money, so much money to provide a space for new things appears, a starter point, an element of making, activating interaction between people. So we built this explosion, this moment. We call it, this is not a love song. This is a place to be, to act, to perform. Because in this world of no aim, no agenda. We just go as zombies somewhere. I would like to remember just this wonderful film, Dawn of the Dead, when during the moment where zombies arriving and killing, the deaths are become back and eating people. Families discuss on the TV, should they kill them? Should they, are they human or not? And during that, the world go to the hand. Anyway, I'm sorry for my way of speaking, blah, blah, blah. I just tell you, it's a big circle. 
we practice as a big circle. As Robert said, I live between Paris and Lisbon and many other space, but let's say Paris is one of my very strong base. And as you know, this last month, a lot of things occur in Paris. It's a kind of laboratory of a new society. We don't know if it will be a new, but it's a moment, very important moment, I think, for democracy, for the base of society, French society, and maybe more European, a place of experimentation. So I just bring this uh, palindrome who is youths, who called in Jérôme Imus Nocte, we turn around during the night and we will burn by the fire. So I have exactly 20 seconds to finish, and I will tell you, you should look about this Ford Guide for Outdoor Living on Wells, who was made in the 50s, 60s, about the utopia of a new world with no boundaries where we can go everywhere. The thing we need to preserve is probably this idea of living together. So we propose this democracy portatile to go everywhere, protecting the people and the way the people should speak and think and question day by day, day after day, our life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Didier. Thank you very much. Please stay on stage for, uh, for another minute here with me, please, here. Because we have to build up something there. Um, you quite frankly speak about failure and success. I mean, you're not ashamed of failure. When do you consider something to be a project, to be a failure, and when is it a success for you? I like the two words because they are really connected. I mean, failures for once are success for the other. So I consider there is no failure, no success in a project. The thing is when the question you put, you distill inside the project, start to make reacting the audience. Not this one, but the audience with the, the ones where the project is um, addressed. Mm -hmm. So. When is a success, when is not a success, for me, it's very relative. I think all projects as prototypes, because we are in a discipline, I'm not a designer, I don't work with industry and repetitive. All the projects are unique, so they are not really projects. They are this uh, component of failure because they are prototypes, we don't know, so voila. Do you have an interest in taking prototypes further? Right now? I can't speak about. <laughs> <laughs> now we are doing in a house in a tropical uh, area mm -hmm. uh, for three families. Uh, I don't know how to make three families live together. Mm -hmm. One is already a challenge, so I don't know. Now this moment, um, I need to look about. <laughs> no, but you can, but an answer in general. I mean, you, you love to make prototypes mm -hmm. uh, and you accept failure, um, but do you have an interest in eventually taking prototypes further ah. and making them into a, into a success? Uh. In general? Yes. Or are I you the like guy who is only interested in prototypes? I'm only interested on prototypes, but at the same time, we start, I start to look about one thing was a chair, and I don't, I think, I can't answer to this question. I don't know. It's, uh, I'm prototyping the next step, so I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. It's safer to prototype, perhaps. Yeah. Thank you very much. Robert, merci. Give it up, please, for Didier Faustino. Thank you very much.